Our story begins in the 1950s. That's when a boy on an Italian vacation with his family brought home as many as 10 common European wall lizards to his home in Cincinnati, Ohio. He released them into his backyard, and over the years, the population in the Cincinnati area exploded. The lizards have now made their way to Columbus, specifically Columbus Downtown High School's parking lot. The issue here? As an invasive species, they could disrupt the ecosystem in Ohio and could have a negative impact on native wildlife. With that happening outside, students inside the school jumped at the opportunity to catch and study these lizards, working with Ohio Wesleyan University, the Ohio State University, and the Ohio Division of Wildlife. Mr. Hatoski's junior and senior environmental science classes are taking on the project. They were trained by OSU's Greg Lips and OWU's Eric Gangloff to master capturing techniques and handling practices. This is a unique, unique opportunity. Very rarely do we catch an invasive species before it spreads far out. You know, once it spreads throughout the city of Columbus, we won't be able to do anything about it. But here it's just in one little location. So it gives us an opportunity to try to capture them all and keep them from spreading throughout Columbus and further. And what we've done is we've removed all the vegetation from around the parking lot. And the lizards were very hard to capture when there was all that vegetation. They could hide down in it. So now it's barren, but we've given them ceramic tiles, laid those out all over it, through here to give some artificial cover, a place for the lizards to hide. And that's actually what they like. They like rock more than they like vegetation to hide in. So we're gonna keep doing this and keep checking over and over again until we're certain that we don't have any lizards remaining here. And if we accomplish that, it'll be one of the very few examples we have of successfully eradicating an invasive species before it takes hold. I ain't gonna lie, I was like, uh, you know, lizards, you know, they're part of the way, but then I, you know, discovered there was like rare lizards. I was like, oh, okay, this might be, might be something that we may be able to do. Um, just to just to learn, you know, more about lizards in general. And as, as you're walking along, sort of thinking like a lizard, looking at any places where like the sun comes through and makes a nice like bright spot, or even in some of the the leaf litter here, would be a good spot for them to to go if they weren't necessarily if the tiles weren't warm enough yet, or if they just hadn't chosen to go under one. Quickly into their first search, lizards were spotted in their preferred habitat, cracks in the walls. Dude, where? You're lying. Oh, look at, look at it from where. Did you get one? Right there. Oh, they're like this little special. What is it? They of course love the crevices between the bricks or any cracks in any walls or foundation. It gives them a nice tight space to feel comfortable, to stay warm, to avoid elements or predators. The more of those places that we can remove on these sites, not only put the lizards a bit more out in the open where we can catch them and move them, but take away places where they could hibernate and overwinter and continue to be successful here. But that wasn't the only place they were spotted. Researchers found more in the leaf litter along the fence. When we do catch them, we put them in socks. Like they have air, they don't die. <laughs> and it's just more comfortable for them so they're not suffocating or anything or squished. That was a good plan. That was a good plan. But it was interesting. He knew where his hole yeah, was. Yeah, he knew exactly where he was going. Yeah. Oh, that one's pretty too. It's another male. It's like, it they got like checkered, little checkers almost. Yeah, they got a nice design. Don't they? I know. They're really pretty. It's really alive. Yeah, he's really alive. <laughs> Can I hold it? No, I, I don't want to let it go, but put your, put your finger out and watch. And watch. You, can take, you can get to feel his claws here. Feel the claws on his toes? Can you feel that? <laughs> you can just see a heartbeat inside there. There it is. See the little heartbeat? Yeah. Dunk, 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 dunk. Yep. 
One of the approved methods. Why is for... breathing different when he's on his back? Oh, I think he's stressed. He's probably very stressed out, so he's breathing. Did you want to see him? I got a little. Why don't we see him? You gonna run away? No, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna let you hold him. I'll, I'll, I'll do this, and you can feel his feel his peak grab on you. I'm gonna hold on. Okay. Okay. Do they jump? Yes. They jump and they run. All right. Cool. Well, it's been great to have the students involved. It's always fun for them to get to see what's living around them and, and also expose them to research. Um, not many high school students get to see that kind of work, so it's been a lot of fun. And so, will they bite? Yeah, find out. No, not now. It's freaking out. Oh, you can really see the blues down there. See him on his belly? Oh, right there. Jesse, right there, Jesse. right there, right there. Ooh, right there. Got him. All right. That was a big one, wasn't it? No, this is a small one. Soon, they almost had more than they could handle. Unless you think you can grab them. <laughs> oh. Did you catch it? I don't think so. No. Of course, capturing the lizards is important, but studying their physiology and comparing it to other colonies is something researchers are hoping to zone in on. So we've got our lab here at Ohio Wesleyan University. We've got a great group of students working in the lab, catching the animals in the field and collecting data in the field, and then maintaining the animals in the lab, taking care of them, and then conducting some experiments and measures on them here in captivity. So we feed them mealworms and we give them water. We fill the water dish up with the water and then we just spray the sides of the cages so they can drink the water off the sides and also so it's like a humid type of environment because reptiles, they need that humidity for their skin. I would say the process actually starts as soon as we catch a lizard. So as soon as we catch a lizard, we initially take its body temperature, we collect a blood, a blood sample, and then give it a quick number. And what we're doing there is we're looking at the entire uh, DNA sequence of individuals from Columbus and Cincinnati and also Italy, and we're comparing them to see if there's any evidence that the populations have experienced natural selection on certain traits, the population genetics at a broader level to see, understand if these populations are inbred and how this uh, colonization of this new habitat is affecting the, the genetic diversity within the population. Most of the time when organisms experience a genetic bottleneck, it's a really bad thing because they lose genetic diversity. They don't have any genetic diversity to respond to new environments. But in these lizards, apparently, it didn't, it didn't slow them down at all. And we're trying to understand why that might be or what that process was like. As weather patterns changed, students began to lose their luck finding the lizards. There's a level of habituation that I think could still be occurring with the tiles. There's been a dramatic change in the place they lived in a very small time frame. So although the bushes and the cover that they had previously, the, the cracks in the, in the brick wall have been taken away. And now they have these, these new objects laying there that they could use, but is it safe? Is it something that they want to use just yet? Has it, has it met their standards as a hiding place? And that's something that, that might take a little bit of time for them to use. And so I think we're still in that sort of realizing what the lizards are going to do and how they're going to behave process. They don't really come out in the cold. They can't like survive in the cold. Um, so they mostly stay underground. That's why we have the tiles um, layered in a kind of way so that they have a way to go into them but still get heat and radiated throughout their bodies. And we learned that the bigger tiles uh, will hold heat better. They capture heat better. And we've been finding them only underneath the, the bigger black tiles that I put out there. But as temperatures rose, lizards reappeared this time appearing across the street. 
At first, I was like, we ain't catch no lizards because like most of the time, until the last time we went, we didn't catch none. But all the other classes was, so I was like, there's no luck, no chance of us catching lizards. But then we caught some. I was like, okay, we keep the hope alive. So I'm sure it's going to be more here in the summer. We did catch two lizards, a male and a female. I caught one and a student caught one. Uh, so that was exciting for us because we've been going out a couple days a week. There is a big worry that because the bushes were removed so early and they're so dependent on a very specific habitat that once those bushes were gone, they have moved into the neighbors. In fact, we've seen them in the neighbors uh, block. In the removal process of all those bushes, um, the hope, at, at least, is that only a few were displaced. And so they, they moved across um, and were in the bushes. I believe it's a, it's a multi-purpose building. That's, that's a number one priority on our list, is to keep these lizards contained to the school parking lot and remove them from there to the um, Ohio Wesleyan campus. Unfortunately, uh, today it was a little discouraging that we found some in the, in the vegetation by the apartment building because that means they're not just limited to this parking lot, they're on the next block over. That vegetation is pretty dense. I imagine the folks in that office or apartment building aren't going to be too thrilled with the proposition of removing that vegetation. So uh, that could present a real challenge to, to try and remove these guys. Um, but we'll just keep, keep at it and see, get as many as we can. I have one animal back in the lab that actually laid eggs uh, last week. So a little bit early compared to the animals out in the wild because they've been in the lab where it's been warmer and more consistent. It hasn't exactly been the nicest spring here in Ohio, which actually gives us a little more time. That'll push back the, the egg laying date and everything like that. So. But overall, we've had great success. Been a student, Ethan, has been catching them by hand <laughs> very impressively. Greg caught a couple by hand. I was able to get a couple with the lasso. We're happy that we've gotten as many as we have and we'll bring these guys back to the lab and we're trying to get as much information about the animals as we can. Yeah, Hassan, you can give that to Alyssa, please. Thank you for being the blood Thank holder. You, now when someone asks you like what you did in school today, you're like, oh, I held lizard blood. <laughs> You can never be entirely sure that you've got, you know, you've eliminated all the animals. There's no way to prove that something isn't <laughs> in a place. But if we keep doing that, then we can be pretty assured that we've removed the animals that are here. Or if there are a few left, then and hopefully that number is small enough where they can't uh, continue reproducing and, and build a population back up. So it just takes a lot of time and effort uh, to come out and, and keep catching them. And then repeated surveys, even after we think we've got them all, to make sure that there's no more popping up. The, even if we don't catch every single animal across the street, uh, there really doesn't appear to be many places for them to overwinter there, so that's another thing. Like A couple of loose animals over there may not mean a, an established population. We'll see. With the wall lizards, I don't know if we can ever say mission completely accomplished, that we've, we've eradicated them for sure, but at least right now it looks like we, we uh, I surprised even my own expectations in uh, how well it went. And I think a couple factors led to that. I think getting out here early in the year, removing the vegetation really early in the year, and then really removing the animals early in the year before they reproduce, and also having a lot of eyes on the ground. So it's been fantastic to work with the high school students, and, and they've been conducting surveys uh, regularly when we can't get down here and do that. So that kind of, it's been a real kind of cool collaborative team effort. So I'm thrilled with the way it's gone. Although I think, I still don't feel like we can 100% say that we got them all. I think if we come out a couple more times when the weather is really optimal for lizards and we don't see anything moving uh, with another two or three surveys, then I'd feel pretty good about thinking that we got them. I think what we learned here, we can, we can translate to other sites and, and hopefully keep them from spreading too far and hopefully continue this kind of cool education and outreach and, and data collection along the way. Now, the effort to contain these lizards will continue into the near future with the continued hope of removing this colony.